So the tools we'll be using today are really simple, nothing, nothing outrageous. We've got a flathead screwdriver, we've got a 10 millimeter wrench um, to take apart some of the bolts that were pretty tight, um, and then a Phillips screwdriver. So here's one of the two BYD cells. The other, the other one I already brought up and already took apart. It's 160 pounds, which lifting from the floor, getting it up is not the easiest in the world. I know David Paz did this like 12 times from his car, but after doing it one time, I think what I'm going to do is take this one apart, at least take the heat sinks off on the floor, and then I'll bring it back up there so I can work on both of them together. So the back side, after you take the top cover off, is actually wide open. So all you have to do is take these two screws, or 10 millimeter nuts also, and you go from there, and the front is a bit more complicated, you got to take a little bit more of the plastic off. So on this side, once you take these six screws out, you can access the panel. And it has its own BMS, as I've seen on other channels, right in there. Um, but we won't be using that, we won't be using the fan. Um, we'll be taking all this out to get access to the other bolts to get the uh, heat sinks off to lighten it up so I can lift it up soon. Alright, take a look at this one. This is the bottom of the second cell. I don't know what happened. If that's from heat, it kind of looks like heat. Of course, a heat sink, so that kind of makes sense. But once I got the, the panels off and I got the extra screws off, all this does is you just lift it up. And it is super heavy. So I'm thinking maybe 20 pounds each, so 40 pounds on each battery. But I'll do a measurement later. We'll find out. All right, let's try measuring this without breaking the glass. 18.7 pounds. So multiply that by two, 36, 37.4 pounds. I was able to take off by taking those off. So we've got all the panels off the side, or the top and bottom, and we've also got the heat sinks off. Um, I was able to pick it up quite a bit lighter, but still got quite a bit of weight. So hopefully I don't break my back. And I'm gonna hand this off to one of our lovely cameramen one of my sons, and hopefully he doesn't drop my camera. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's still pretty good. Here. So what I'm going to do is try to put it opposite way. here without breaking any backs or bones or batteries. Um, so the way I did this, mainly for working on it for now, it might be the way I keep it for the, the solar mounts as well. But this side's the positive on the bottom. and That one's the negative actually. But what happens is it loops with a bus bar all the way around to here. So this is actually the negative cell of the bottom battery. And then this will be the top, this is the positive cell. Um, so it'll be easy enough to series these two together and then again the same same thing with this battery um, back here is the negative of the back battery so all the positive and negative um, for both batteries and in, in order to access like I did down here all they are is these little tabs put a little screwdriver in there pop them out and they come right off and then you'll have access to each one of the terminals for the batteries um, in individual cells um, and we'll, we'll start to check them out later on. Um, hopefully they're, they're pretty similar. The ones on the bottom were pretty close, but we're going to have to balance them. We don't have to wait for that. Alright, so when we set these up, um, the idea here is that we have two 24-volt batteries, um, but I want to have a 48-volt system. So in order to do that, um, all the cells will be in series. So currently, the eight cells down here are all in series to make 24 volts, and the eight cells here are independently in series. 
Um, and that's why we'll talk, we'll, we're actually making both sets of batteries into essentially one big battery, um, 24 volt, by putting in the series. So do you guys know what series and parallel is? No. no. You don't? So if you think about series as kind of the, the most common thing where you put them, putting in AA batteries into a, you know, a remote or something like that, how that the positive goes on one side, then the negative, and then the battery is flipped around, and then it goes from negative to positive. So that's series. Um, and what happens there is the voltage um, will increase. If you go in parallel, um, which you don't really see in remotes or anything like that very often, but what happens there is the amperage will increase. So the voltage will stay the same. So you can put multiple 12 volt batteries in, in parallel a lot of times for, you know, our RV has, has it like that, so it keeps it at 12 volts, but the amperage stays up and it has more capacity that way too, because it only puts out so much amperage each. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. So like I said, each one of these are in series. And if you look right here, you can actually see the individual cells. They go, they go this direction, so the white cells going back and forth. And what will happen is there's a positive and negative of each of these cells, but they flip back and forth. So when we take the readings here to get the individual cell voltages, sometimes it's going to be negative, um, and sometimes it's going to be positive, but that doesn't really matter, because I'm not going to switch the leads. Um, that's the only way I can see it all positive. But the actual voltage would be the same. So if you want to zoom in there, and then tell Jake the voltage numbers. 2.81 volts. Okay, so one, cell two. 2.85 volts. Cell three. 2.84 volts. Cell four. 2.88 volts, 87 volts, 88. Cell 5. 2.90 volts. Cell 6. 2.9 volts. Cell 7. 2.81 volts. And the last one, cell 8. 2.92 volts. Okay. And one other check. I'm going to go on both terminals. And we're going to check those. Twenty-two point nine volts. Okay. And Jake, what's the the cell number on the very top? And it says what voltage? Twenty-two point nine seven. Great, so that's about what they said they were chipping it at. All right, so what did the kids learn today? Well, first, Dad, me, I can only lift 160 pounds once in a day, apparently. Um, it's about 73 kilograms for some of you. Um, luckily, taking that down to about you know 122.6 pounds after we removed the heat sinks, um, I was able to do that again. Probably could do that a few more times, um, but who knows. Um, we also talked about heat sinks a little bit further as we were, the boys and I were, were talking off camera. Um, so the heat sinks um, in these original cells or the original batteries, um, they were used to dissipate a lot of heat. Um, these were used in buses, um, electric buses actually. So they were, they were utilizing at their maximum capacity really. So they were bringing up the voltage and down um, as much as they could every day. So the, the heat that they were probably pulling off was really important. I don't think I'll be using those um, for my application, so I'll probably be removing them, but, but we'll have to see. Um, as I do the capacity testing and, and other testing, um, we'll know a little bit more of around the heat um, from that. Um, we did talk about um, the difference of uh, ser series and parallel. That was a, a lot of the discussion, especially as we were pulling in the, the different voltages and, and understanding that you know, in series, all the voltages that we were, at, we were recording actually added up to the full voltages of the entire battery. Um, you know, this top unit being a battery. Um, same thing kind of happened with the, with the bottom ones. Um, there's a little more resistance on the bottom one. Um, so we're going to have to see what that one's going to play out. Also, we talked about balancing just a little bit. Um, so balancing, we want each individual cell to be pretty much identical as they go up and down in voltage when you charge them and discharge them. Um, these, these were not identical, but they weren't too bad on the top. The bottom ones, you saw the numbers on the paper. Um, they're, they're quite a bit further out. So we're going to have to, I'm going to um, bottom balance those 
Um, but I'm gonna have to wait for, for some extra tools for that um, that are coming in the mail. I could do them with a little bit of kind of paralleling them and, and kind of equalize the voltage, but it's, it's gonna take too long, I think, and, and I'd rather do it in a safe manner. Um, so part of this is just to get involved with my kids, um, to teach them a few things that they're not learning in school right now, um, to challenge them to, to do some applications. So we're gonna build some solar panels or put some solar panels together, build an array, do an off-grid system, power some of the house, um, and learn a whole lot about electronics. But we're also gonna learn about other things, I feel like. Some, you know, some, you know, tune up the mower before, before uh, spring comes along. Um, and, and then whatever else the boys come up with, you know, in my case it's boys, but this is not going to be just boy-centric type things. These are engineering, these are um, life skills that I, I think any, any father could apply to, you know, son or daughter. So if you like the material, please subscribe, um, comment, feel free to ask more questions. I'm hoping that you kind of sit down and watch this with your kids or maybe they watch it alone and ask you things.